the Absa Cape Epic. We've seen a thousand images and photos of this race. We marvel at the breathtaking vistas in the majestic mountains, the long dusty trails bathed in the morning light. And in them, we usually see a bicycle or two, or a hundred. We have seen the best mountain bikers in the world battling for prestige and the prize. We've seen Joe Average doing the impossible by just rising every day, considered mad by conventional society. We've seen the wipeouts and the falls from every angle. We've seen the riders, the emotion and the pain. We've seen bucket lists being ticked off. We've seen dreams realized. But this film is not about the rider. This film is about the unsung hero. The things we don't often see. Someone planned every bit of branding and raised the finish arch at every venue. The 3,000 street markers didn't just grow on those poles in every town. Someone worked all day to put them there. Someone stops the traffic at exactly the right time to make sure the roads are safe for the riders to cross. Someone erects thousands of tents daily, laying them into perfectly straight lines. Someone brings in the mattresses to ensure a comfy night. Someone prepares in the dark and rides ahead of the rest to clear the animals and open the farm gates. Someone tends to and straps up the wounded to ensure they are ready for another day in the saddle. Someone rubs the aching muscles. Someone stays up all night to keep the bike safe and ready for another stage. Someone toasts 4,500 pieces of bread every day and cracks open 35,000 eggs over the event. Someone carries the riders' bags, restocks the water, puts up the flags and fills the refreshment cups. Someone charges the radio batteries, and someone even planned how to evacuate the entire village if killer bees attacked. This film is about you, the true heroes of the Absa Cape Epic, the crew. Um, the appeal to do it in the first year was just the sense of adventure. The sense of traveling across the country on a bicycle is, is a pretty rad idea. You know, and to throw in sort of 500 people and tents and moving every day and, you know, covering great distances and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, yeah, the appeal was just the adventure. Yeah, I thought it was a fantastic concept. I mean, it was a little bit crazy, I thought. And I had my doubts, um, but I subscribed to it because I think the vision was, was great because nobody had ever done that before. So it was really a challenge and I'm always up for a challenge, you know. I love it, yeah. I love helping people. I always have, and this is just makes it even better. I'm out in the open air, um, outdoors, in the bushes, doing the 4x4 thing, everything that makes me excited and happy because I'm an adrenaline junkie. And uh, getting to patients makes it even more exciting because now you're helping them out in the environment you want to be. To get involved in it, is, uh, I don't think I will ride it myself one day. But uh, just to be part of a big event and uh, amazing event of Cape Epic, uh, I think that is quite achievable and quite nice to do it. Um, I think I've always been the kind of guy who, who likes um, the unexpected, who can think on their feet. Uh, I like the kind of strategic challenges, I like the innovation that it comes with. Um, and so that's been my career choice, so doing this has been really part and parcel of my makeup. The concept of a, of a multi-day event was, was, was so new 10 years ago um, and, and the basis of a full service multi-day event was, was what drew us to it. Um, the idea of riding from one location to the next and providing everything that the rider could need so that the rider can actually just enjoy the amazing terrain that they're riding through. Um, I just thought the concept was absolutely brilliant. There's nothing like the African continent. It's hard, it's beautiful, it's rugged, exactly like the saying goes, untamed Africa. And uh, following a race from Neisner down to Cape Town, as they became known, the off-road Tour de France really attracted me. And you really want to see what happens, especially with the world's best coming out here. 
It's one of those dreams that any person who loves his riding wants to do. When Kevin approached us with this event, there was no doubt. We were going to do it, absolutely. It was, it was so exciting. The concept was so exciting. Never been done before in South Africa. Very few events like this actually happen in the world. It was really a, a major challenge. And I think we all just grabbed at it and said, well, hey, this is something worth really, really doing. Showtime. That's what makes me enjoy it, is the moment when you see things like this and you see the people and you hear the riders. And initially we used to have these school children lining the barricades that we that we'd source from the, from the schools around us. And we get them clapping as people come in and that, that adrenaline rush to me, that's, that's it, I love it. Well, I've been working for about 15 years on, on adventure race or, or cycling, you know, like starting off in, in road cycling, taking photographers or uh, working with Dr. Evil, you know, he invited me on my first cycle race actually. And um, then did a couple of small races and then he said to me, hey, you know, there's this race they're talking about and it's going to be the, the biggest, bestest race, adventure race ever. And so, um, you know, and the, the option of being lead bike is, is there. And it was like, okay, cool, it's, it sounds great. And, but you could never fathom it. You, you couldn't believe, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the, 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 the logistics and the, especially those first years when we were moving massive distances with just one set of tents and one set of trucks and, you know, things have changed. Working for the Epic is a different dynamic. And I always say that every rider should work a year to actually understand the event because it gives you a completely different perspective about what happens in the background of the event. You know, as a rider, you get up in the morning, you go and have your breakfast, you get on your bike, you ride, and when you get to the next stage location, everything, everything's set up and you get your next meal. You know, they don't see all the transport, all the logistics that go behind getting from point A to point B while they're having fun out there on their bikes or suffering, whatever the case is. To put the, the Cape Epic into context, it is, it is virtually like moving a town. A town that has elements such as electricity, where the, the entire race village is powered by, by generator power. You can imagine 7,000 people coming forward and say, listen, what, where and how? And if there's not an, a, an office where people can say, listen, I need to know where is my accreditation, I need to know where is the toilets, I need to know where to eat, I need to do where, know where my laundry is, they will be running around like headless chickens, you know. I mean, in principle, you are just a part here. Um, they don't know who I am, they don't know where I come from, they don't know, they just know that if I have a problem, if there's something I need to know, I'll ask him. The race office, in actual fact, is is an hourglass center for every possible person and then sometimes at Lodensford there could be about 10, 15,000 people who has got questions, who's got complaints, who's got disciplinary actions, who's, they just need to know where's the toilet, they need to know who's who. Being involved for, for a number of, a great number of years in the Argus and the, on, on, on the Epic, it's taught me that you can't just go out there and do something, you need to plan accordingly, you need to put the right systems in place and make sure that everything works uh, like clockwork and you've got to work on the worst case scenario. You need to plan for the worst so when it happens you're not caught unawares. I've grown with the event and I'm very passionate about the mountain biking uh, fraternity and the event and we want to go out there and to give them that support to make sure that the riders have the right people and the right systems in place so they feel safe out on the routes and they know if uh, they need someone, we only a call away. Because of the distances involved and the terrain that they're covering, um, things can go wrong very quickly. I mean, just through sheer tiredness, you can make a mistake and, and end up needing medical help. If we get a call saying the rider's down from a marshal, we'll go and check it out. Even if the guys got up and carried on cycling again, we'll go and check it out. We'll never, ever leave a call. We try our best to get through the quickest uh, we can to get medical help there. And when we get serious calls there, we make sure that we can get the, the most qualified uh, medical personnel there as quick as we can. So we could dispatch them to any point where we feel that it's necessary. And that's all done by the, the radio network. Um, without that, uh, we'll be lost because there's no cell phone problems in most of these areas. 
We have to make sure that we are able to provide communications for all the route crew, which includes the medics, includes the lead bikes, includes the sweeps, includes the marshals. All of us are absolutely dedicated. We work together fantastically as a team. We understand each other. And, you know, the goal is to, to make it work. And ultimately, it's the safety and the well-being of the patient, which is actually the riders, that actually is it's the bottom line. You know, that is our, our priority. You know, we will, we will move everything else aside. That is, that is what it's about, to, to keep the safety of the riders in focus. It's, uh, it was quite a task initially. Um, and eight years ago, ten years ago, it was, was a huge mission because there weren't many people out there who could do that kind of thing. But what we didn't realise was that, in fact, um, we couldn't pre-plan any stage. We could only pre-plan the first stage. Looking at what we take with us, um, we have kind of become a field hospital rather than just, you know, an emergency centre as such. And in fact, in many instances, what we take with us is more than most emergency departments have for their regular operation. In most instances, a 20-bed emergency centre would be attached to a major academic hospital, so something of the likes of Schroederske Hospital. Well, what, what people don't see, of course, are issues like a farmer or his staff might move cattle from one camp across our track to another, and they might have to go in a dog's leg, so all the cattle are in the way. So that, that's, a, that's an issue. And, of course, spectators can be Probably more of a challenge than ostriches and goats and cattle all put together because they tend to park in odd places and stand next to corners and and they're, they're quite a danger to not only the lead bikes to, but to everybody really. And also the, the obstacles are, are sometimes challenging, you know, going through rivers and out of banks and so on. So your timing on a motorcycle is critical to get that right because if you fall off then you're behind the leaders which makes it very stressful. <laughs> to say the least. People think we out here just to play and have fun, but the people get seriously injured sometimes and we need to move them out to more definitive care where they can be treated properly and that's our role. I think being a good medic means you have to be a people person. You have to be able to work in any situation, any circumstance, regardless of weather, whether it's hot, cold, raining, um, you still have to be able to function 100% because a medic that's not functioning 100% is no good to anybody. You pick up different ways of finding out where you have to be and trying to get to where you have to be and negotiating interesting areas. I mean, we've been through water crossings that we thought would never get through. We've had motorbikes fall and disappear into the water, pick them up and we go, oh, maybe we can get through that, maybe not. The fun is trying to, trying to get to the places they say we couldn't go through. <laughs> when you're coming up a hill and it's the, the angle is almost unrealistic, and, and there's just ruts, straight ruts like this. They're not even across it, this is easy. But when they're with you like that, and it's deep, and you can get stuck in there, and there's no turning around, there's no taking off again. You get one single go at it. And, and you, just, you just look ahead. It's the one thing with, with motorcycling, same as with a bicycle. Don't look down, look down, fall down. You just look ahead, and when things go wrong, you open the throttle a bit wider and you look further ahead. And it just, you just go, and it just it always, always works out, you know? And it's just, don't give up. This is the secret about anything in life. So when things go wrong, don't give up. You know, just try harder. <laughs> the hours are difficult. You're working from, you're up at five or before, trying to get some stuff around the pits while the headlamps are on and, you know, there's lights and all that kind of stuff in the tents and, you know, and then you're working through to the same sort of thing, but late at night, guys, last minute repairs and all that. And that's before we've even gone out on the route. And then the route itself, you know, while you can recce or look at maps or, or whatever, you're never really quite sure how it's going to all, all those things are going to line up. What's the story of the day? Who's racing who? Where does, where's the sun coming up? Where's the shadows? Where's the backlight? Where's the, you know, where's the dust going to be? All those kinds of things. And, and then as your day gets on and gets a little bit longer, the sun's a bit higher, so then you, everything's harsher and hotter and you have to just kind of work with that and just feel out the story of the day is kind of how I read it and read the race. At this event, we pretty much expect everything. Um, there's nothing that surprises us. Uh, we occasionally see things which you would expect a bike which has done thousands and thousands of kilometers of miles to, to break at that point, but they break 
after only a couple of hundred kilometres, in the, just as a result of the conditions that we're riding in with this event. The lube service that we provide en route uses 400 tin cans of chain lube over the eight days of the event. We have a team of six guys, three at every water point, providing the lube. It's a biodegradable, eco-friendly chain lube, and that's one of the big reasons that we're involved with the event is because of the ethos of the ABSA Cape Epic being a green event. What draws me to this is that we get to go through places when no one else is ever allowed, never mind on a motorcycle. No cars, no nothing, and, and these, these landowners allow us to go through these untamed African landscapes that, that you, you, you'll never ever get the opportunity to ever go. And that, the highlight for me is seeing the success every day, the success of this race. The, the happiness of the people, you know, seeing guys coming in at the, in at the end of the, the race and they're battered and bruised and bleeding from everywhere and tomorrow morning they stand at the starting block so amped like they've, as if they've never done anything the day before. Like it's the first day, but it's not. It's the third or fourth or fifth or seventh day or ninth day, you know. And then when they make it to the last day, yes, the excitement is so incredible when that's before the, before the gun goes off in the morning, you know. It's really amazing that that's the human spirit is for me an incredible thing and it shows you more than anything else I've, I've experienced. To survive a week in the epic, I, I reckon that you've got to be, make sure that you're not going to get sleep. That's it. It's, we never get sleep on this. You, you survive on a maximum of five hours and that's a good night. Uh, other nights you um, living off three hours sleep. And a good sense of humour is the only thing that's going to get you through this. And you've got to constantly crack jokes on that and keep the morale going. Otherwise, it's just you're going to fall apart. And, and that's the most essential tip is to bring a good sense of humour along with you. Otherwise, you're just not going to make it. <laughs> Very much I fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I've got a sense of humour, etc. So I don't mind ripping off people or joking with them and things like that. Uh, things like stats about the riders, through the years I've just accumulated them. Um, I do a lot of reading and luckily the memory is not going yet so it stays in there for a long time and the less I think when I commentate the more it pops out naturally. For me it isn't hard to do anything in this race because I just enjoy the whole concept, I enjoy everything and I've made very very good friends. The quality of people is phenomenal. This is not another job, this is really, it's a passion that you live out and every single one of the, the Cape Epic crew members who you'll see again and again and again every year that come back for punishment has got that same feeling of commitment to say, I want to make this Cape, Absa Cape Epic amazing. And that is the principle. The teamwork and, 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 and everybody, although we are separate elements, we, we are, there's a seamless integration and understanding of the complexity that each one has and assisting when that person is in need. And, and, and that's the essence of the teamwork in the, 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 the Cape Epic. If one part fails, then you will know that the whole part is sliding. And, and to be part of that core decision makers, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a, it's a very satisfactory feel to say, listen, I've moved that truck or that thing for a specific reason to make sure that Cape Epic will turn. The challenges from a bike point of view have changed over the last 10 years. Um, initially, the riders were very unprepared and we used to do a lot of work on the bikes every day. Nowadays the riders are very prepared, they come with new bikes, a bit of equipment. So generally nowadays we're just doing minor servicing every day and fixing crash damage or damage that's happened during that day's stage. And that can be anything from a simple inner tube change or a tyre change right down to rebuilding a bike with a new frame. We see everything. In the morning they're full of uh, cheer and happiness in it. In the afternoon they want to sell their bikes and uh, give it away. And but the next morning they appear and says, no, thank you very much for the good work, hard work, looking after my babies, they say. And then they're off again. The security is quite uh, good here. The rider must come and fetch his own bike. He's got a number, number on his wrist and number on his bike. It must be the same, or else he can't get his bike. Or like we normally say, no tag, no bike. And uh, for the last 10 years, not one bike has been missing out of the bike park yet. It's very cool seeing some of the riders come in at the end of the day and hearing the stories that they've had from en route. Um, when they explain to you the problems that they're having with their bike, it's, it's generally not the bike's problem, it's just a tired rider. Um, we find situations where they say the gears are not working, but all it is is that their thumb is just not pushing the gear lever hard enough. Um, and when we get the bike in the stand, the gears are actually working fine. The, the things that really um, excite me about my job it's basically coming back every year 
and being here, being on the event. It's like, it's like a family reunion every year on the Epic. And that, that is what's so nice about it. You know, you learn to know, to know people, you network, you, you're meeting different types of people and interesting people all the time uh, from all walks of life. We just have a fantastic team working together and it's actually an honor to be part of the, of, of, of the Epic. I feel happy. I can't do it because it's my holiday every year and feel great. We're tired, we get miserable sometimes, but at the end of the Epic, when we get back to the end of Lawrenceford, you think, no, it's another year before we start the Epic again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> because every day is a new challenge, new route, new challenge, new rivers, new boulders. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a wonderful experience, really. Uh, the Cape Epic for me has meant a lot of different things. Um, it's pushed me creatively, visually, to try and tell better stories with better pictures and in, you know, stunning landscapes. And it's, I've seen so much more of the country than, you know, a lot of people. You know, you can tell, or you can almost tell where you are based by the dirt or the trees or where the sun is and the mountains in the background. And, that is an amazing experience, you know, and it's, it's helped my career, it's helped me produce better photos and doing that as a photographer is all you can ask for, really. You're part of a team and it's the team that is actually the success story and the media team is really a great team and they do an amazing job and I'm really privileged to be part of that. It's been an absolutely wonderful 10 years. Um, there's been ups and downs on all of the things, there's been some hard times, there's been some good times and, and that's what it's all about because it can't be plain sailing the whole time, you know, that, that life is not like that and it, it, it will always get a curveball thrown your way and, and that's what's nice about it is that at the end of the day you can, that's how you manage that curveball and that's what teaches you through life and that's what the Epic's also uh, been teaching us. Looking back, it's um it's quite, it's quite surrealistic, really, to think that you've actually been doing this for 10 years. And the other thing is that when you come onto events and you look around and you, you see everybody there and you think, well, you're actually part of such a fantastic family. You know everybody and everybody greets you. And because you know them, you slot into their functions and they slot into your functions and everybody understands what is expected of them and how they fit in. And that is so amazing. It, it really is a... Um, it's a fantastic feeling. Every single person that's here is here because they want to be here and they love being here. And that to me is, it's, it's, it's a miracle to see that because it, the whole world should be like that. You see, you can't explain it to everybody. The guy must be coming onto the Cape Epic to enjoy it, to see what's happening here. Well, I get a feeling that most, most of my friends and colleagues think I'm a little bit irresponsible because I'm you know, a bit old for this kind of thing. And I said, well, it's just a matter of attitude really, you know. And if you can keep yourself fit and active, there's no reason that age should really make an enormous amount of difference. Obviously, you make certain compensations, but in general terms, you know, I wouldn't like to stop doing something, pushing the envelope, I think it's called. And I think we should all do that. I will never ride the Epic. I, I don't think I ever will. Um, uh, but uh, trust me, every single year, it feels like I have ridden the Epic because pretty much out with the cyclists every day out there and uh, you know we vicariously we feel their pain there's no question about it so I do think that we've had an intense experience I just won't be pedaling. It just to be part of this whole event is just is just fantastic it's a, I mean I, d I don't get any sleep you know we don't get much sleep here and uh, we work to the bone but it's um, it's it's, it's just great, it's a, it's a good feeling. When you're over it and you're done with it, it's, it's really, it's a satisfying that you've achieved it and you know, hopefully everybody's happy with the results and the patients are sorted. You, know. you stay part of this Cape Epic team for 12 months of the year. There's no such thing as, I'm going home now, I'll see you next year. It is, it is life. When you hear the sounds of the crowd, seeing those riders coming in, knowing that they've done their Epic and that you've also done your Epic that we can execute that dream that Kevin had 11, 12 years ago. Executing that and always building on that dream. And we haven't stopped. There's still a lot more things that we can do. And there's a lot more things that we can do better. That's it.
It's been a great year, so on behalf of the Apps Cape Epic team, I'd just like to thank you for all your hard work, your dedication, your passion, your commitment to making the event the success that it is. Without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. I think also to the loved ones, the friends, the family, uh, thank you for your sacrifices that you've made. It's been a tough time for, for most of you, but uh, it's finally over. We now go into recovery phase and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in 2014.